Hello and welcome to the first tutorial that goes along with this uh, new art workshop. I'm Christopher Ampling. I am your host and your teacher for this uh, workshop leading into 30. 35 students going to be published at the end of this as well as 6 going on to work with their entrepreneurial project. Now I do apologize ahead of time for any sound issues. I'm producing this in a work in progress studio at my shop so there may be a few minor sound issues so I apologize ahead of time. So basically what this is, is the first tutorial workshop video introducing basic drawing concepts. Now I know a lot of you visited McGoffin County High School this morning. It was a great visit. While I was there I noticed that a lot of students had their hands up saying that we're more interested in the writing aspect of this workshop versus the art. So there weren't a, a lot of students with an art background. That's okay. Um, anyone interested though in pursuing this further, even after this workshop, or if you're currently even producing uh, content at home, uh, there's a few books that are available. I wanted to share it before we got actually into the actual basic lessons of this first workshop. And one of those is uh, Anatomy for Artists, which is a um, it's a great it's a great book. It's it's a little more advanced, but what's so great about this is it deals with bone structure and anatomy. Um, uh, things that you have to basically have a general knowledge of if you want to be an illustrator one day. Um, how the muscles connect in the hands, so if you draw someone some, from a certain position, you want to know um, basically what happens autonomic, auto, autonomically speaking. At anonym, I can't even say it. Um, uh, with your anatomy, like how your, how your muscles will move, um, things of that nature. Um, another great book is How to Draw Manga. Uh, Bodies and Anatomy. This is another great um, um, resource. So I know a lot of students are more interested in, in the manga or manga style of art. Have a lot of questions. What is the difference between uh, manga and anime? Well, Japanese manga actually means that it's in it's in written form on paper. Anime is the animated film version. So the styles could be completely similar. But how you view it, it makes a difference between if it's manga or manga and anime. A great book to pick up for all you comic fans is, is, is uh, Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. This is probably available maybe in your library. If not, it definitely should be. Um, this book helps you understand the basic concepts of cartooning. And um, also, Writing with Pictures is a book that we're working on getting everyone participating in this workshop a copy of this book because it's invaluable. Um, along with the, the manga or manga series, you can get other supplementary guides. This is one that is um, it's a supplement to actual the actual anatomy book. This is pen and tone inking uh, techniques, so working with ink. So that's a few resources uh, that you could go to the local library, your school library, and see what they have. I'm sure they have some stuff. Now for the purpose of this video, you're going to be watching me draw. We're going to shoot for the overhead camera here in just a second. And when that happens, I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil out because I want you to follow along with me. And we're going to see exactly how we put together some basic drawing techniques, okay? All right, let's get started. I want to show you a couple things before I begin again. Um, these are resources uh, that you can pull from and you can use these resources if you have them available to you. This is a uh, figurine. Now you pose this uh, little guy at, at a different position so you can actually um, get ideas on how the, um, the body um, um, looks at different angles doing different things like for instance uh, you could be getting ready to kick a so soccer ball or something. So um, these are available in art it's classes a lot of times, so check with your school's art class. You may be able to find one of these. I like to go over materials before I start any project just to show the different types of materials. Now this is a standard pencil. Um, usually if you look on a pencil, you'll notice that there's letters. They're not a, there's not any on this one, but usually there's uh, letters. And what those letters represent are, are the hardness of the graphite in, in the lead. Um, so if you have an H or an HB pencil, like a 2H pencil, which is typically what you find in a lot of classrooms, um, there's a scale. So the scale goes from light to dark. Um, you will see a lot of drawing pencils will be marked, such as this one, uh, with the letter B. 
okay um, and then also we have here a 2b now what that means is um, there's H is, is the lighter portion of the scale and then B is the is the darker portion of the scale with the graphite so if you have a 2b it's just like the scale from B is the middle point then a 1b well this is considered 1b then a 2b 3b 4b 4b uh, 5b <laughs> and it goes so on and so forth that that means that it basically gets darker as you go down the scale and the same thing for going up the scale uh, if you have an H pencil then you have a 2h 3h 4h going up the scale in lightness there's all sorts of different erasers you can get the one on the end of your pencil should work fine but if you wanted to go get something like this at a local uh, hobby store um, these are these are block erasers or stick erasers there's also a putty type eraser that you can get that you actually can bend and shape and um, this lets you to get into smaller areas um, there's also a type of a wax eraser um, this is called art gum um, all of these are are great um, I even go as far as to keep one of these little brushes alongside in case I do a lot of erasing and you have the um, pit the eraser shavings all over your page and if you're working on a very de detailed piece of art you want to use this to brush off the uh, pencil um, the eraser shavings that come off okay that's not all this is not mandatory stuff at all uh, in fact for the purpose of this I'm going to be using simply um, a standard classroom pencil and eraser now you can go on out and get a mechanical pencil as well if you have a mechanical pencil would prefer using it that's fine too doesn't matter they even have pencils with blue lead now the reason they have pencils with blue lead is that whenever you photocopy um, in, a, in, a, in a scanner machine you, you, you make a photocopy of something if you do it in black black and white or in grayscale uh, the blue won't show up okay so it's non photo blue uh, lead which is really handy if you don't want to do a lot of erasing um, pencil sharpeners are always good to keep around you have one in your classroom if you don't um, you probably have access to one I bet um, nearby at least everybody has uh, pencil sharpeners laying around uh, sets of woodless pencils are also available at hobby stores these are exactly like they sound they have no wood it's all graphite okay so these pencils are usually meant to give really really uh, strong lines okay um, so if you wanted to invest though in some of these materials this is also just like a mechanical pencil you have a mechanical eraser believe it or not there's tons of stuff that you can get involved with when it comes to art and creating art now this is a basic drawing tutorial so we're going to start out with some basic concepts and before I get started actually showing you some of these um, I want you to think back to today's class and think of the circle method that I shared with you and we're going to pull out something uh, from a really cool kit that I just I just I had to pick it up in the stores because it really fit uh, what I was trying to do in the classroom so basically what this is is a it's a Star Wars um, Rebels drawing guide and and what this does is it has vellum vellum is see-through paper on some of the pages and you can see actually when I lay this down you see the character in the background you may be able to pick up that there's circles on this vellum when I do this you can see it better now these circles are exactly what I was talking about today where I said when you use the circle method you to draw out um, basically your guide first and then you move in from there okay so if this is the method we're going to be using for the purpose of this workshop uh, I think it's a great method to, to start learning from and so that's what we're going to be pulling from the most okay now for super detailed pages um, you know you want to get you want to get sort of uh, comfortable using this method um, when I worked on a book this is a book that I recently finished called the pirate ship bed trip and it was written by um, Nancy Quackenbush she it's published by Hidden Wolf Books in St. Augustine Florida when I worked on this book I had to draw this main character James a lot throughout the book and um, whenever I would draw my characters out I'd always use this circle method and I would lay my pages out in certain ways like you see this is a double spread as we call it where the artwork goes across two pages you may want to do that with your artwork but all of these drawings that you see in this book were created using the circle method it's a great method to use I love using it um, also for a local author Abby Combs uh, she created um, holding the light a soldier's journey 
Um, this, this book, I used the same method for the illustrations in this as well, um, creating all the characters using this circle method. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to use this method. Um, but before we start, a couple more things I want to share with you. This is a finished page of art that I completed for Bruce Parsons. He wrote a graphic novel titled Mockingbird. If you look really close, you can see the blue inside of some of these panels. This is a graphic novel. And the blue is that non-photo blue pencil lead that I was talking about earlier. And what this does is it doesn't pick up. So when I scan this page, it doesn't pick up. So this is one page of that graphic novel, okay? When I first read the script for it, this is what the script looks like. So his story looks like this. The title's on the front, and then when you open it up, uh, literally, you have panel by panel what's going to happen already written out for you. This is a great idea if you're going to create a graphic novel. Writing it out, almost like a movie script even, is really, really um, just invaluable. Before I started work on this graphic novel, I also had descriptions of the characters, what the characters look like. So he described to me what the characters look like prior to ever starting working on the actual book. I knew what the characters look like. I knew what was happening on each panel. That's the idea, okay? Um, you want to go... You could go as in depth as you really wanted with, with your work. Um, and another example that I have here of something that you could actually use is from a mini comic that I just finished. This is um, the vellum cover. It's called the Hillbilly Bigfoot Survival Guide. It's about this little, this little guy named Bill and his friend who's a Bigfoot. I created this mini comic. And the mini comic is basically what it sounds like, a small comic. And all these pages fit together. So in a way that when you took this, this entire comic and you took it and you folded it and, and you can bend it, flatten it out, staple it, trim off the edges and you'll have a, um, a completed smaller comic. Now I went as, as far as to, for this series that I'm doing, create this guy which is a clay model, believe it or not, of the little character Bill. Um, I made this out of um, Super Sculpey. Um, I baked it. I put a coat of white paint on it because I'm getting ready to make actual molds of this character. You could go all out with your designs for your characters. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, also, another tools you can have. I love tools. I love talking about materials. If you wanted to keep some stencils around, stencils are great to use, especially when you're trying to draw a perfect circle. It's kind of hard to do that by hand. Some can. I can sometimes. Not a whole lot, though, to be honest. But having these stencils around can surely, surely help. All right, let's jump into today's lesson. So grab a pencil and grab yourself a piece of paper. And we're going to go ahead now and get started. We're going to use the circle method to begin with here to um, draw out a character. And we're actually going to be pulling from the book that I shared with you a little earlier, which is um, the Star Wars book, okay? And um, we're going to be trying our best to create um, a character from that series, okay? All right, so the first thing that I need you to do when you start out, you're going to be making these shapes like this. You're going to start out with an oval. So go ahead and draw this with me at home. You have an oval here. We're going to be making a stick figure first, believe it or not, okay? You're going to draw a line coming down like this, stopping, okay? Down where you stop with your line, you're doing another oval. This one's more sideways than it is long ways. It's more wide than it is tall. I'm going to put now, go back up to the top. I'm going to put a straight line coming down this way. There. I'm going to draw another circle here. Okay, go back on the other side. A smaller line up there. And another circle here. Okay. Just below that, put a circle. straight line okay another circle here all right come back to this circle you draw a straight line coming down add another circle onto that straight line coming down from that and then here what you're going to do is actually a triangle okay this is an arm this is an arm this is his waist you're going to draw a line coming down like this stopping Another circle here, a line coming back from that one, stopping, and you're going to draw another oval. 
Okay, come back up here, draw a circle here. A line coming down from that one. And you go draw another triangle. Now I know this looks super compli complicated, like what are we doing exactly? I wanted to show you this first where you could get an idea of exactly what it is we're doing. So this is a body, shape of a body. The idea is that this Jedi warrior has a lightsaber in this hand, okay? Right here, all right? He has one knee down to the ground, another knee bent, and this arm is holding, uh, holding, holding themselves uh, steady on the ground, okay? So I start to fill in this character, right? Start up here, like I said. You wanna do your lines for where your eyes are, line for where your nose will be in the mouth. Okay, you can start to see how this is gonna to come together. We'll draw first the area filling up around the shoulders here. Okay, so that's the shoulder area. So all of this area is the trunk of the body, the chest, and shoulders. See how that works? Over here then, we could put a, um, a guard to the elbow, some armor onto the character. So that would be here. So this would be filled in. This would all be armor here, right? Uh, the arm would continue down. This would be the elbow. Some more armor here coming down to the wrist. This would all be shaded in. See how that works? So we drew a triangle here. This is actually to help us guide where our hand will be. Drawing fingers is really hard for a lot of students. We're not going to focus too much on that right now. You can follow along with me the best you can. Okay, I'll do something a little more simpler next. So there's the hand here, bracing themselves on the ground, right? Go back up here. I'm going to continue on. This arm. This arm, you can't see much of it. It's behind the body, right? The elbow is actually coming in, tucked underneath the body somewhat. See how that works? So this is the hand that's actually holding the lightsaber here, like this. So the lightsaber will be here. The lightsaber will come down like this. And this is the lightsaber for now, right? That's the trunk of the body to the, uh, this is the waist area here. This is the waist. This is a leg that's bent coming up. So you can see how that works. Then the leg will extend down to the ankle here. So this would be the ankle area here. And then the foot here feet and hands hardest thing I've noticed students have the hardest time drawing so don't get too wrapped up in that right now okay so we're gonna put on a little bit of a uniform for this character and the lightsaber extends back this way a little bit it's double-sided lightsaber there, right okay and then the leg will come down to the knee the knee will be here going back up to the foot this foot is bent on the ground. So you can see how this character is starting to take shape now, right? All from a few circles that we used. Of course, the face, you have your brow here. Not a very happy uh, Jedi, but there's the nose, the mouth, and then we could put some hair on the top of the head and ears on the side of the face. There we go. Have ourselves a Jedi, right? So this is the idea. Using the circle method to build up areas that we want to create in. That's really, really important. Flip the paper over. We're going to start again. Get an idea how this is going to work some more. So now I want you to uh, follow along with me again. This time we're going to do something a little more simple. We're going to focus more on the general concept of circles. Let's draw another oval there, just like that. Okay, straight line. This is the line from the neck to the waist. So the waist will be here. This is the waist area right here. It's a funny way to put it, waist area, but you know what I mean. Okay, a line coming down on both sides, making up the legs. All right, and then we have the uh, feet draw ovals for the feet you can put circles for knees if you want it's fine 
This is the shoulders here. Over to the, uh, the shoulders, which come down to the elbows, right? On each side. And the hands, right? So this is a stick figure. That's all that is, is a stick figure. This is what we're going to be using to design and shape our character. Now from here, what you could do is start to build on and you can actually add things to your character. So I may draw a straight line showing where the middle of the head, the face will go. A line for the eyes, nose, and mouth. Okay. Uh, from here, what I could start doing is I could actually add features onto the drawing, such as I put an ear on both sides of the head here. This comes up. So the chin will come down about right there. There's our chin. Okay. This is the neck here, right? Uh, the hair can be about right here. So this will be the hair. And curve the hair around the head a little bit. It's an eyebrow, another eyebrow, two circles for our eyes, right? Nose, mouth, okay, we continue on with our shoulders, making up our shirt. Can you see how I'm following along with these lines though? The lines are telling me where to draw pretty much. I'm not having to do a whole lot of thinking about how far down this should be, how far wide will this be. I'm basically using these lines, okay, to draw from. And that's the entire idea with the circle method. You won't stick to your lines completely 100%, right? But you'll use them. They'll help to guide you. And it really does help a lot. If you have any trouble drawing um, people or anything, using the circle method really helps a lot. So the idea is after you would draw this, you'd go back in, right? You'd trace over it. Okay. And... Once you trace over all the lines that you create, you would then go back, once again, after you're finished, after the ink dries real nice, and you would erase the lines, okay? Use this in how you create most of your characters for your story. It's going to help you a whole lot. It's going to really, really improve the look of your characters doing this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just doing this really fast, give you an idea of how this method works, okay? And when you use this method, you'll learn more and more that the more you plan for a drawing, the better that it actually turns out at the end, instead of having trying to just draw from, uh, you know, guessing where parts go, to guessing where different elements go, you already know from the beginning. And we could take this one step further, actually. We could actually go as far as to um, take this in and create the circle method using specific parts of, of the body, right? For instance, let's try the face, okay? We're just going to draw a giant oval for the face. So there's our giant oval for the face. A line coming down like this, right, for the center the neck here so let's say you have an illustration that the only thing you're going to be seeing is the is the figure's head you may have something like this going on so you want to know where the eyes are so my eyes will be on both sides here the nose will be about here and the mouth will be about right here okay so I have the ear here coming down like this okay because the figure's looking in this direction right you can draw detail with the ear, much or, much or as less as you want. You know where the head is based on your oval. So you know where the line is for the hair. So you're going to draw some hair coming up. Like that, okay? And then follow your line down. This is where the chin 
this is where the chin is so that the face stops there you know that because your circles are there bring it in some put a little more shape to the face right you know where your eyes will appear so I'm gonna go ahead and put the eyebrows in there okay nose about right here don't have to do too much detail for the nose a small little shape like that just to imply where the nose is and then the mouth can be drawn in again not too much detail right the eyes tons of different ways you can do eyes don't get overwhelmed by this you can just simply put a couple of circles or half circles to represent where the eyes will be like this okay it's good to add a little bit of detail in the middle where the pupil is so maybe some light for where the light's reflecting like that okay so you may have some light coming out the mouth you may have some dark portions inside shoulders like this so now we have all the all the parts of a face but we started out using this oval so when you go back and you start to ink this in when you, when you actually draw this stuff in using a pen or maybe you're going to use a marker uh, we're going to be using some different color techniques pretty soon so you have an idea how different colors work together I mentioned today to start thinking about your color scales color wheel things like that. If you don't know what that is, look it up to get a head start on what we're going to be talking about later on. Okay. So here we have a face. We started out as an oval and from there we built and upon it more and more and more. So I do hope that this has helped you some. I hope that you've gotten an idea about how this works. Uh, remember you can do any of this stuff from home with just a pencil and an eraser. That's all you really, really need, okay? Well, I do hope that our video made some sense. Um, Thulu here seemed to enjoy it a little bit, I think. Um, and I hope you did too. I do apologize for our sound quality. I live in Pike County and I think no one up the street I live, live up really um, yeah, it has mufflers. Um, it sort of sounds like about 20 blenders thrown into a uh, to a Raging Rapids or a tornado. So I apologize for that. Um, but hopefully through the sound quality you have picked up something. Uh, please go to theholler.org, log in, share your work, ask any questions. If you want something to work on between now and the next workshop, be sure to start with your pencil pages. Try to get an idea about how the pages will look. If you need more tutorials, go to YouTube, look up the circle method, and you should be perfectly fine. I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. Again, thank you. Uh, uh, Thulu's getting impatient, so I think we better call it quits. Um, see you next Monday. Um, I think we're going to Pineville High School. Until then.